PFAS or PER and polyfluoroalkyl substances are polluting our environments. They're all around us. They're ubiquitous. They're in the utensils that we use at home. They're in products, consumer products that we purchase. Stick around to learn more. PFAS, or per- and polyfluoroalkyl substances, are a mixed group of over 5,000 man-made substances that consist chiefly of carbon and fluorine. The first PFAS, or polytetrafluoroethylene, PTFE, was discovered accidentally in 1938 by Roy J. Plunkett at Dupont de Nemours. DuPont patented the compound and registered the trade name Teflon in 1945. Beginning in the 1940s, the derivatives of PTFE, P4, or polyfluorooctanoic acid, and PFOS, or polyfluorooctane sulfonic acid, have been used in nonstick, water resistant, and stain resistant coatings. Now, because of their widespread industrial use, almost every person living in the developed countries has PFAS in their blood. But what is the significance of that? Well, here is the problem. The carbon-fluorine bond is one of the strongest chemical bonds that exist. PFAS are almost entirely composed of fluorine bound to carbon. And because of that, they can remain in the environment and in the bodies and tissues of animals and living things indefinitely. It is for that reason that they are called the forever chemicals. PFAS have a variety of properties such as water resistance, stain resistance, oil and grease resistance, and heat resistance. These properties have made PFAS ideally suited for use in hundreds of industrial applications and consumer products, such as nonstick cookware, firefighting foams, carpeting, clothing, and upholstery. PFAS compounds slowly build up in the organisms of living things, including plants, animals, and fish. They can be found in the groundwater, in fresh water, in marine water, in the drinking water, and in the soil, and they have been isolated from the blood, the breast milk, the urine, and the tissues and the organs of humans. In 1961, 20 years after the first PFAS was discovered, the chief toxicologist at DuPont sounded the alarm that PFAS may be harmful to humans. It was only 20 years later, in 1981, after they noticed birth defects in babies born to female employees at the DuPont West Virginia plant, that they pulled female employees from working with Teflon. Drinking water testing performed by DuPont in 1984 confirmed high levels of P4 around the Washington Works plant, but the company concluded that it was not economically attractive to reduce. P4 emissions. In 1989, workers at the West Virginia plant noticed unusual numbers of leukemia deaths at the plant, and months after that, they recorded high numbers of kidney cancer among male workers at the plant. No action was taken until in 1998, when Wilbur Tennant, a cattle farmer whose land was downstream from and boarded a landfill that was used by the DuPont Washington Works plant near Parkersburg, West Virginia, noticed foamy water in a creek from which his cattle drank. Then he noticed strange behavior in the cattle and black teeth and skin tumors and malformed hooves, and he noticed calves being born with birth defects. 153 of Tennant's original head of 200 cattle died. He contacted a lawyer by the name of Roy Billet, who filed a class action lawsuit against DuPont 
involving over 70,000 citizens of the Mid-Ohio Valley whose drinking water had been affected by the pollution. That lawsuit ended in a settlement in 2017 for $671 million that helped to fund a massive health study called the C8 study. It was that study that established a possible link between P4 and high cholesterol, kidney cancer, testicular cancer, ulcerative colitis, thyroid disease, and pregnancy-induced hypertension. We're exposed to PFAS through the air, through the plants, the meats, and the fish that we eat, through the soil, through certain types of fertilizers, in the womb across the placenta, and from breast milk as infants. Of these, food, drinking water, and industrial activity are the most common sources of contamination with PFAS. People also become exposed to PFAS through the use of household items that contain these substances, such as nonstick cookware, waterproof fabric coatings, and cosmetics. PFAS can become airborne and spread with the wind to distant locations. Harmful levels of PFAS have been found in rainfall at certain times, rendering it undrinkable. Workers who work at manufacturing facilities that employ these products in production face a substantial risk. Bearing all that in mind, here are five scenarios in which you may want to get tested for high levels of PFAS in your blood or in the environment. The first is if you have high cholesterol without a family history of the same and despite following a healthy diet. The second sign that you may be suffering from high levels of PFAS in the environment is the development of unexplained type 2 diabetes. By unexplained, I mean without a family history and without being overweight. The third situation is if you're a woman who's trying to get pregnant and whose doctor has ruled out all of the common causes of infertility. The fourth sign of possible adverse effects from high levels of PFAS in the environment is the development of kidney, liver, or testicular cancer without exposure to the common environmental insults that are associated with these diseases. Liver cancer is usually associated with hepatitis B, hepatitis C, cirrhosis, exposure to alpha toxins produced by moles in corn, peanuts, rice, and wheat. And kidney cancer is more common in those who have a genetic predisposition for the disease, as well as being obese, smoking, or having high blood pressure. You can suspect PFAS toxicity if you develop testicular cancer without a family history and without abnormalities of the penis or the testicles or infection with the HIV virus. The fifth sign of possible exposure to high levels of PFAS is the development of kidney failure in the absence of hypertension, diabetes, uh, nephrotoxic medications, or other environmental insults. If any of these scenarios apply to you, you may want to seek testing or check with your local health department to inquire about high levels of PFAS in your drinking water supply or in your environment. While a blood test can tell you about the levels of PFAS in the blood, these are not regular tests that are done in doctor's offices and health departments, and the test does not prove that PFAS caused your health condition. Remember, there are over 5,000 PFAS that are used commonly in manufacturing and industry. Although all the uses of P4 and PFAS have almost been completely phased out by many manufacturers, there are still ongoing uses, and these chemicals can remain in the environment because of their lack of degradation. P4 and PFAS were replaced by new PFAS with the trade names GenX and PFBS. In June of 2022, the EPA issued a new health advisory with limits on PFBS 
and lower limits on Gen X in drinking water. Despite this, thousands of newer PFAS continue to be used in manufactured products globally. These are not regulated and they're not tested for, and we do not know what their long term effects will be on the human body. Thank you for watching. I hope the video was informative. If you liked it, like, share, leave your comments in the space below, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to support the channel. Until the next video, stay healthy and stay safe.